Hello and welcome to Resource Review. Today we're hoping to inspire you with three different resources for primary RE. A Hindu storytelling doll. The battles raged on, first one side, then the other side. A book about Nazi-occupied Denmark. It's saying that all Danish people are equal, so you're not going to single any of us out by making us wear a yellow star. And a DVD pack of Buddhist tales. To find out more and to see what our panel think, keep watching Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is our subject expert, Leslie Pryor. Leslie is RE advisor to Hounslow LEA and PGCE Religious Education subject leader at the Institute of Education. We also have Ray Barker, director of the British Educational Suppliers Association, and Alan Mills from the Specialist Schools and Academies Trust. Welcome to you all. Thanks very much for coming. Well, Leslie, let's start with this wonderful looking resource the Rama and Sita doll. Can you talk us through it and tell us why you chose it? This beautiful and attractive resource is used for the retelling of the Diwali story, which is probably the most popular aspect of Hinduism in the RE curriculum in primary schools and it features key characters from that story. So on this side we have the prince, on this his lovely wife Sita and if we flip it over we have the multi-headed demon monster wow. so as I'm sure you can see children find this hugely attractive and really enjoy using it in the classroom. Now it also comes with a little booklet as well so the resource comes together like that but I mean there must be many other products if this is a popular aspect of RE for primary pupils. Why this one? Well there are several versions of the, of the story but I think this book wonderful though it is because it's accompanied by this gives it um, more status in, in my eyes as a worthwhile classroom resource. Children enjoy playing with this very much, uh, not least after they've heard the story and they can then retell it themselves which provides the teacher with a very um, useful assessment opportunity. Okay, well before we discuss this resource any further, let's have a look at it and use in the classroom. We visited Ray Sherwood at St Matthew's Primary School in London and he's using this resource with his Year 4 class to teach them about Rama and Sita. Today I've been using the Rama and Sita doll to retell the story of Rama and Sita that fits in with our work and celebration of Diwali. She wanted to be really, really rich. And so she knew that if Rama became the new king, he would want the people to all be rich. It's quite useful having the various characters in the one doll, because what I was able to do was to turn the doll at significant points in the story and also use it quite dramatically to show the change in characters from good to evil. The battles raged on, first one side, then the other side, getting an advantage, but nowhere could they get anywhere into the palace. The doll was well received by the children. It's good in the sense that it simplifies the story and it gave me an opportunity to add drama to the story as the story unfolded and it gives them a prop when they themselves use the doll to retell the story of Rama and Sita. Well Leslie both yourself and our teacher Ray there have talked about giving the doll over to pupils to retell the story themselves. Is it really robust enough for that? I think so, and I think one of the things anyway children should be learning in RE and indeed in any other subject is to have respect for the resources that they're using in the classroom. Well, Alan, what do you think of this as a teaching resource? I think it's actually wonderful. I think this is my favourite story in the world. Um, the Rama Seed story, the Ramayana, is definitely my favourite story. And any, anywhere you've got blue gods, Mm -hmm. um, cavorting around with monkey kings, you've got a fantastic story. And I think this is a fantastic resource for just 
telling that story in the way it's best told, telling it, and then allowing the children to retell the story again. This is just a fantastic tactile resource. You want to play with it, you want <laughs> to demonstrate it, and you want to tell the story. And it's yeah. the classic story of good, evil, light, mm. darkness, the whole thing. Fantastic. Mm. Ray. And I'm going to pass it over to Ray. Do you want to play with it? Yeah, I mean, it's impossible not to play with it, isn't it? And I think that's the thing. We could sit here all day doing it. And, and, and I think absolutely with Alan there that, I mean, it is about storytelling and, and all that real push in RE towards the stories and how important they are. But also, I think um, having the book is really important as well because it does focus the real issues of the story, which, you know, are about the evil mm. and the light and the dark, which is what the... Diwali story is about. So great, I'm going to put it down now. <laughs> well, Leslie, a very popular resource. Well, now let's move on to the second resource, which is a book. It's called The Yellow Star. And Leslie, again, talk us through this resource and why you selected it. Particularly in primary schools, it's very difficult to find appropriate resources that deal with very difficult subject matter in, in a clear and accessible way. And I think this book does that. It, it's the story of how the King of Denmark, according to legend, wore a yellow star and encouraged all uh, Danes to do the same. So they're showing solidarity with the Jewish community under the Nazi regime. Um, it's beautifully illustrated. It's got a simple but profound text and, and, as I say, I think deals with very difficult and contentious issues in, in a way that children can cope with and learn from. All right. Well, before we move on and discuss it with Alan and Ray, let's see the book in you. We visited Year 3 teacher Rowan Plunkett at Simon Marks Jewish School in North London. And then we're going to talk about a few of the pictures and some of the writing in the story. The resource was The Yellow Star, um, and it's a story about Jewish people in Denmark back in 1940. I thought it was a lovely story and uh, really made the children think about how they would feel. They were a Jewish person in Denmark at the time and how they felt when the, the king decided to wear a yellow star and the rest of the people did. So It's saying that all Danish people are equal, so you're not going to single any of us out by making us wear a yellow star. The key message definitely was that the Danish people believed themselves as one nation. And I think that came across more than anything in the story and also about how the Jewish people were treated as well in the past when the Nazi people came to, to Denmark. If King Christian called on the tiny Danish army to fight, Danes would die. If he did nothing, Danes would die. At the end of my lesson, I asked the, the children that didn't have a jumper to go into the middle of the circle on the floor and asked them how they would feel if they weren't allowed to do something like sport. They came up with some interesting responses before they all decided to take off their, their jumper and, and we all looked as, as one class at the end, which was a lovely thing. If you use the text in the right way, I think there's no negative things about the text. I think the, the illustrations were fantastic. There was good puzzles, rhymes. There was a metaphor in there that was very useful to look at. I think they loved the story, the children. I think the adults in the room loved it as well. It's a very powerful message, I think, and I think, yeah, I, I think everyone would enjoy that book. Well, Leslie, we saw this book being used there in a Jewish school. How would it work in other schools? I think it has a role to play in helping children to explore issues about difference and prejudice and discrimination and so on, which are key to a good RE program. OK. Now, Ray, there's an interesting point about this book, isn't there? Because it's, it says that partially based on truthful history. Well, it's not based then, at all on truthful history. I know, and I it, do, it, does, it does say that it has an underpinning of historical truth. And it also says it's a legend. And, and I, th I think, um, I mean, I think it's, a, it's an incredibly beautiful book. Um, and it's an incredibly moving story. I have no issue with that at all. And, and, and I mean, it's won various awards. And it was really interesting to see it used in the, in the classroom where the teacher said, you know, if it's used in 
particular ways, which is what teachers do. And it's a very successful book. But I know, and it's a question for Leslie, really. I mean, there's a huge debate on the internet about this book now because um, various Jewish groups are um, are saying, well, actually, it wasn't like that in Denmark. And what does it mean about what it is to be Jewish now? This is going to be an issue with Ari all the time, I suspect. What would you say, Leslie? Well, I think you're right. Ari is full of stories that may or may not be literally true. But even if they're not literally true, there is truth within them. And I think that's one of the things that a good teacher will explore with, with pupils when using this book. Alan, what, what do you think of the book? Is it more citizenship than Ari, well, though? No, no, not this story. I mean, there are too many things in it which are highly contestable. And if you're a his history teacher from the Second World War, the statement on page two that one thing all Danes had in common was they were loyal su subjects of their beloved King Christian. Well, certainly that isn't the, the view of a lot of historians of Denmark at the time. Lovely story, agree, and you know, lovely pictures, and the, the sentiment is wonderful, but why spoil it by putting in some fairly contentious statements, which I think anybody from a different perspective would have problems with? Might that put off teachers, do you think? I think any material which deals with something like the Holocaust or the Nazi regime is something that some teachers will occasionally want, want to be wary of, but um, personally I, I think it should be there in the curriculum, although as I've said, obviously taught in an appropriate way. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Leslie's third choice of resource, something different again. This is a DVD pack. The Monkey King and Other Tales. So Leslie, explain this resource to us. I chose this because Buddhism is probably one of the main world religions that features infrequently <laughs> in, in RE syllabuses and a lot of teachers in primary schools in particular are very nervous about it and I think resources like this will help teachers to gain the confidence they need to you know, tackle it uh, as, as an area for study. So what do you get with this particular resource? You get the DVD, obviously, uh, which includes six stories from the Buddhist tradition, stories that are told in cartoon-type format, and there's also a very useful teacher's guide, which, again, will offer support to, to those people who, who feel insecure with, with new material. What would, what would you two over here say on that point, Ray? I Loved it as a resource. I thought it was brilliant. And you're absolutely right. I mean, the Buddhist angle through stories and, and some of those key stories there and, uh, and, and the teacher resource material with it to support them. I mean, you can see it being used in, on a kind of interactive whiteboard and all those kind of things that teachers are really getting into now. So you could, you could really make it a very exciting lesson, I think. Alan? Fantastic stories, the whole storytelling thing. And, and also the commonality between that and the other Indian subcontinent religions. It really brings out the opportunity for children to see there's some really great stories that don't just come out of the Old Testament. Well, Leslie, that's a very popular choice for your third Good. one there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much to all of you. That's just about all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we looked at were the Rama and Sita storytelling doll and a row of lights booklet from Articles of Faith Limited, the Yellow Star book published by Cat's Whiskers, and The Monkey King and Other Tales, DVDs and Teacher's Handbook from the Clear Vision Trust. For more information about all of the resources that we've looked at today, and to post your own comments about other RE resources, why not go to our website? It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. If you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So I'd like to say a big thank you to our panel, to Leslie, to Ray, and to Alan. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.